Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another Genshin Impact playthrough session. We just wrapped up, or rather a couple days ago, we wrapped up the Act 3 of the Sumeru R Conquest. We are officially in Aru Village. We've met Candice, we've met Sino, we've relinked up with All Hate Them, who was being a little sussy baka. They all got a stern talking to. They all seem to be on level playing field now, and it seems like we're going to be discovering some hidden truths and secrets within the desert regarding the Scarlet King, and maybe some of the lore regarding this place as we kind of figure out about these divine knowledge capsules and whatnot. I did just finish talking to chat about this, but I absolutely loved Act 3. I feel like a lot of people hold Act 3 in such high regard because there was just non-stop going on. We got Nahida at the very beginning, Dotore's reveal, we got Scottamush's backstory and lore, which came out of literally nowhere from Hepasia. I thought we were going to go back to the Ermansul tree. And we also got like that fighting sequence with the Traveler, Nahida getting uh, attacked, and we see what basically is becoming like a prototype build for Scaramouche to become like a clean slate god. From his lore, it seems like there's a lot of just in general like misunderstandings with why A decided to quote unquote abandon him, why there was a misunderstanding with his friend who was a human, which seems to be one of the descendants of Kaede Harakazu. Oh, I'm sorry, one of the ancestors of Kaede Harakazuha, and obviously the unfortunate realities of humans that just die over time. You know, they die for unreasonable things that are out of our control. So Scaramouche just basically has a lot of misunderstandings for the nuances of what it means to be a human, the strife, Basically, he's a puppet that has no way of comprehending the human condition, and it becomes such a conflicting thing for him to deal with that he just wants to be done with human emotions altogether. He wants to become a divine being and seemingly become a god. I don't really know what his end game is because he also says that the gods fill him with complete loathing. So he doesn't like humans, he doesn't like gods, but he's willing to become one himself. So I don't really know what his end game is in terms of why he wants to become a god what he wants to do with this power but i hope we figure it out and we find out as we continue on by the end of this archon quest with act five or maybe act six if that comes out next patch but we are back on track we are going to be following up with act four king desherit and the three magi but before we jump into that I have officially gotten Sino and Candace both to friendship level 10, which unlocks both of their name cards. Silence for Sino. <laughs> Whenever Sino falls into a profound silence, he must be considering the weighty judgment, or perhaps he is simply considering something amusing. He's coming up with his next, like, banger joke. His next dad joke of the year. That's what he's doing. All right, and then we also have Candace, also friendship 10. We have Grey Heron. The burning winds of the past rough the heron's feathers but the bird has eyes only for the morning star at first light that's sweet i like that one too all right all characters friendship 10 pog championship let us proceed the missing village keepers oh yeah we have to look for those mad those mad lads literally mad lads <laughs> we gotta look for some like mad scholars entrusted by isak a resident of aru village you and sino begin looking for clues about the village keepers the scholars that have gone missing, have you seen them? Ah, those eyes. Oh, God. Those fierce eyes. You, you look like a real fighter. Don't change the subject. Damn, sir. She's not the enemy. R right. You were asking about the, vi I mean, the mad scholars. Ah. I think it's been a few days since I last saw them. I usually go to bed pretty early, so I'm not too familiar with what goes on at night. But honestly... I feel quite sympathetic towards them. Even though they act a little strange, they've helped me in the past. If it weren't for them, my house would have collapsed long ago. Do you also think Grandpa and the others are good people? Oh, hello there. It's little Isak. You mean that nice man who looks like your grandpa's long-lost twin, right? <laughs> he was actually the one who protected my house. I saw it with my own eyes. He happened to be staying near my house that day and was doing something with his hands on the ground. Oh, what is he doing? He's making... Well, whatever the case, I'll always be thankful to him and whoever taught him to look out for others. I'm pretty sure that if I ever went mad, I wouldn't be able to do anything like that. Gotcha! Thank you! What's wrong, Sino? Did something happen? Don't say anything for now. I love how Sino's like, don't say anything for now. Get it? Because the Traveler never talks. 
Stay quiet as you move. Hey, you know what? Quiet's my middle name. Ooh. King Deshrid and the three magi. Listen, see if you can make out what they're saying. Have you heard? The mighty Scarlet King, the sovereign of our faith, will soon return to this world. Of course I have. The Scarlet King is the one and only true ruler of this land. I've never believed in any other gods. You say he's coming back, but it sure doesn't feel like life's about to change around here anytime soon. What's your proof? Haven't you noticed? The village has been getting more deranged scholars than ever. Delavar was saying that many people also went insane just before the fall of the Scarlet King civilization in ancient times. Oh, damn. We don't quite know why, but it seems like there's some sort of connection between insanity and the Scarlet King. Repeat everything you've just said from the very <laughs> beginning. Damn, son. Man's just got caught in 4K in the desert. Who are you? Uh, where did you come from? My patience is running thin. You heard what oh. I asked. Oh my god. What a fucking badass. Oh, okay, good sir. W what is it you would like to know? Tell me about the Scarlet King's resurrection. I went for a drink the other day and heard others talking about a rumor that the Mad Men will disappear and that the Scarlet King will return to this land. Mm. I'm not making this up. I swear. It's all true, sir. We desert folk have had more than enough of those people at the academia. They keep sending us all their mad scholars and won't let us have a good life. Would you want to live like this if you were in our place? The radicals were even more thrilled than me when they heard the news. Mm. We're all praying for the Scarlet King's speedy return. Delavar also said that once the Scarlet King returns to our side, it's only a matter of time before we conquer the land on the other side of the wall. They're all willing to serve under the Scarlet King and fight for a share of the glory. You know what Sino's thinking right now? This man's like, hearsay, more like heresy. <laughs> Where is this radical person you talked about? I haven't run into him over the past few days, so he probably hasn't been around the village. Mm. What about you, man? Have you seen him at all? No, uh, not at all. We wouldn't dare lie to you. He's really not here right now. I have many ways to stop you from talking. <laughs> and many others to stop you from sending warning messages. So you'd best just stay home and hope I don't hear of you trying to contact anybody. Well, this is where Grandpa usually stays. There sure isn't much here. Hmm, what's that smell? Sino, did you catch a faint whiff of incense? No. Please don't say it's the same one as before. Oh, these guys are tripping balls. It's definitely that one. There's a scent that you can sense, but I can't. Yes. A certain traveler here once passed out from that smell. Thankfully, Tainari saved the day. And then he gave us a long lecture to explain all about how it worked. Did you first encounter this scent at Tainari's house? No, it was in the forest where a scholar was meditating. Let's keep looking for more clues. There we got footprints. Oh, now I talked to Sino. Damn, I found that shit before he did. Take a look right here. Paima doesn't see anything. Although the traces have been completely buried in the sand, there are footprints here from the size and shape. They belong to an adult male. This pattern is a common one from this area. Local shoes. Mm. This was probably someone from the Might village. be your grandpa. The footprints head in the direction of the door. You mean someone has been here? But who would come looking for Grandpa? He doesn't have any friends. Damn, Sag. We'd have to ask whoever lured him away with the incense. Lured him away? So that's what happened? So you can lure someone away with just a scent? You get lured away by food all the time. <laughs> hey, what's wrong with liking good food? Everyone's got something they love in life. Could the disappearance of all the mad scholars have something to do with the radicals? It's highly likely. Let's head to Aru Village and inform Candace and the others about what we learned here. All right. After that, we'll set off to find the scholars. Let's go! We're back, Candace! We've got a lot to tell you. Sounds like everyone's friends already. Oh, Dale's mm. here too! Did you find out anything useful? Yes, we did. So someone used a kind of incense to lead the exiled scholars away from the village. Yes. The resurrection oh. of the Scarlet King? Yeah. First I've heard of it. This guy's sus too. Far as I know, the kind of incense you just mentioned is only popular beyond the wall. Not to mention making incense is a labor-intensive process. 
You won't see anybody in the desert with the patience to make or sell something that requires that kind of effort. It seems someone from beyond the wall must have been supporting this. <laughs> He's literally just watching us like a freaking looking ass. If it was any other day, that would be your next logical step. But today, you've got me on your team. Didn't you say that the villager got his news from the tavern? Well, I also like to drink at the tavern, so I know a thing or two about these radicals he mentioned. The leader of the radicals is some guy called Delavar. Delavar, the scar-riddled bandit, Enger, the wide-eyed butcher, Ooh. and Jabari, the duck-tailed bearded crook. The whole lot of them are known around these parts. These guys have one thing in common, and that's being broke. The rougher Damn. life gets, the more they want to believe in the Scarlet King. Uh-oh. Throwing like... all of Sumeru into chaos is the only way to change the way of life here in the desert. Anyway, that's my guess why they've chosen to become radicals. Alright, yeah, that one guy was like, ah, damn, they figured us out, let's cheese it. But Dia, I... Dia was winking at me, maybe I should stay quiet for now? Or, maybe that's a hint, chat, maybe she's into me. I don't know many girls that wink at me in the game that... You know, it could be a sign. I'm coping and I'm hoping. I need to go around and ask some questions, but it'll be difficult if you're- Oh, I see she's trying to give Sino the slip right here, I think. <sighs> Fine. Good, then we've got a plan. The Traveler and Paimon will go to Caravan Rebot with me, and we'll try our best to figure out where the Mad Scholars have been taken. You'll have to stay in the village and continue investigating on your own. See ya, nerd. Oh, this guy's still here? What the hell? He was staring at us the whole time. Mm. There we go. She set his ass up. Well played, Dia. Well played. Dia, uh, you're not thinking about doing anything scary, are you? Uh, no, not at all. This <clears throat> place just gets me thinking, that's all. Yeah, thinking leads to action. Besides, we're here to procure information, aren't we? Yep. yep. We gotta catch those... We gotta catch those what, Paimon? Shh. Caravan Rebot is crawling with people, so be careful what you say. We don't want anyone to find out what we're here for. Our mission started the moment we arrived here. Let's go check out the tavern. Maybe we'll find someone I know. Oh my god, Chad, it's just me and Dia. We're practically on a date. Dia, is that you? <laughs> the hell's this? What a coincidence. You here for a drink too? Hmm? Zaki? <laughs> Finally, a friendly face. Mm. Who do you have with you here? Oh, nice to meet you. Hello, hello. I'm Zaki. Dia's, uh, how would you put it? Drinking buddy? <laughs> mm. We've had drinks together a few times. You could say we go back a ways. Anyway, as far as my friends here, they aren't too shabby, are they? You rarely see any outlander so friendly and respectful nowadays. Absolutely. <laughs> Much better than those people on the other side of the wall. So, Dia, are you looking for someone? Yeah. Have you seen Enger, Delavar, or Jabari recently? Of course I have. Matter of fact, we were all here drinking together just a few days ago. I've got a spice trading deal from another nation. I thought maybe Delavar and his friends Ooh. might be interested. Know where I could find him? Delavar's my friend too, so of course I can take you to him. Come with me. Alrighty, Dia's making moves. Alrighty, make sure we're not getting ambushed. Are we there yet? Yep. This is the place. This place is practically deserted. What are they doing in a place like this? <laughs> Why don't you take a guess? Oh. Go on. A wild stab in the dark. <laughs> You're like lambs to the slaughter. Bruh. I thought we were drinking buddies. Call the police, but not for me. <sighs> What's this all about, Zaki? Man just interrupted my date. Come on, Dia. You really think we didn't hear about what you said back in Aru village? The boys have kept a close eye on you from the moment <laughs> you set foot there. The boys. Not only do I know that you're looking for Delavar, I also know that you've teamed up with people from the academia to look for the missing scholars. So, you've been watching us from the very beginning? Oh no, it's almost like we planned that from the beginning. And you left the strongest one in the village, didn't you? Who do you think you are? You really thought we'd fall for your little business deal nonsense? Damn. Congratulations, you played yourself. So you and Delavar have been partners all along. We're all looking forward to an uprising in Sumeru. 
Damn. There's nothing more we'd like to see than the desert folk overthrowing the academia. If that's the case, then I'm sure Delavar wouldn't miss a second of it. I'll be honest with you. If it oh. weren't for what you said in the village, your little monologue about the Wall of Samuel would have convinced me that you're one of us. Delavar. And Enger, you're here too, huh? I thought that you, a fellow desert dweller, would understand that the Scarlet King is greater than the Dendro Archon. Little did I know, you don't deserve to join us. <laughs> yeah, gee, what a missed opportunity. The Scarlet King's probably rolling in his grave looking at you guys right now. There you have it. Mercenaries are just a bunch of faithless scum with only one thing on their minds. Mora. Pathetic. You're all like a pack of street rats. You're not wrong. Mercenaries are driven by Mora, and my faith lies with whoever's paying me. As hmm. long as there's a profit to be made, anyone can become my friend. So, uh, how much money do I gotta spend on the gotcha? <laughs> Enough talking! Get him! Just as I expected. Let's teach him a lesson, traveler. God, I wish we could freaking trial his Dia! That'd be so hype, man! Judgment is upon him. He's dead condemned! Sykes, Sino did show up. Your penance is due. Damn, that was quick. What do you think about your meticulous network now, Zaki? It's only natural for a traveling mercenary like me to be out of the loop. That guy next to him is just dead. You all thought you were so smart. Pathetic. Don't kill him. Oh, no, I actually kicked him. Okay. Jesus. That should be all of them. So you've been planning this since we were in Aru Village? No task can be done without preparation. I just happened to notice a couple suspicious looking people while you were out investigating. Those two who were snooping around were just a couple small fries. If we want to get the real catch, we have to be patient and give it some time. So, that thing you were saying before, is it really true about how mercenaries only care about Mora? And that anyone's a friend as long as there's a profit? Yeah, what, what are we? We're not friends? Oh, I gotta swipe the card? Does that bother you? I don't think you're that kind of person. What makes you so sure? Because even without an employer, you're still helping us out. Uh... Do you dislike the Dendro Archon like the other desert folk? <laughs> you two are pretty sharp. No, mm. I don't have anything against the Dendro Archon. I've heard a lot of nice things about the Lesser Lord from Dunyarzad. I can understand her devotion and gratitude. Dunyarzad's just an ordinary person. There's no way a god would be so involved in the lives of everyday people, unless they were truly compassionate. I've begun to realize that the sages are behind everything that's happened recently. The radicals' blind belief in the Scarlet King, making the Dendro Archon out to be an enemy. Mm -hmm. It's all the academia's trickery. I love how she said that an Archon wouldn't be involved in the lives of everyday people unless they were truly compassionate. I love how she said that because we just did the Mondstadt event with Razor and like Barbados like summoned his winds and gave everyone like a little moment of their past, like a memory of the past for them to like remember during that festival. So I'm just like, Fenty's compassionate. Anyway, looks like we're done with business here. Traveler, lend me a hand. Let's tie him up and bring him to the village. This should be all of them. I'll let you take it from here. All right. I'll be in touch. Until then, please stand by. While I'm questioning them, why don't you pass some time by exploring the area? Oh, thank God, finally! I've been wanting to do that this whole time! I'll meet you back here tomorrow morning, Traveler. As for these idiots, let's just hope they live to see another day. There we go. Eavesdrop. Hold up. You heard the question. Now answer me. Damn. <laughs> ah! Oh, man. That guy's lucky. He's getting hit by freaking can't. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not that much of a simp chat. Okay, relax. It should have been me, not him. It's not fair. Come on in, everyone. Oh, Jesus. Watch where you step. The pools of blood are a little inconvenient. Come on. Let's go inside. Candice, where? Whoa, you look furious. Yeah, she's in attack mode. Do I? Huh. What gave it away? Oh, there's no mask that can hide true bloodlust. <laughs> Cover up your eyes, and it'll still show itself at the corners of your mouth. It's perfectly understandable why I'm angry. I'm sure everyone present would agree. Uh, yes, yes, ma'am. <laughs> Please, don't feed us anymore. <laughs> We're gonna die. Well, looks like Sino taught her well. <laughs> yeah, she mastered it quickly too. You fear death yourselves. 
yet you do not hesitate to place the lives of others at risk. <laughs> the absurdity is mind-boggling. Damn, the audacity. The ones you call mad scholars are known to us as the village keepers. Mm. They are vital members of our community, and some even count them as family. You come here to my village, and you treat my people as nothing more than stepping stones towards your goal. Tell me, what would you do to you in my position? Uh, I will not talk shit about the mad lads anymore. I will call them the village keepers. Mercy! Please have mercy! <laughs> I will respect them. You've made your bed. Now lay in it! The people of Aru Village care little about which god is in power. Life may be tough and tiring, but we wish to preserve our way of life. A war would only cause us to lose all that we have. And that is not a responsibility that you can afford to shoulder. Uh, we understand. We're sorry! You'll be sorry when I'm done with you. I'll tell you everything I know, please! Just let us go! You might not believe this, but it wasn't us who came up with this idea. Someone was spreading rumors in the tavern. That's how we ended up hearing about the Scarlet King's resurrection. Some mystery man told us that mad scholars will make the perfect sacrifice to usher in the Scarlet King's resurrection. They give their lives, and we can get anything we wish for. Where the hell did all Haytham go, dude? He's missing out on all this stuff. It was all that mystery man's doing. He told us to spread word about the Scarlet King's resurrection and talked us into helping him. In return, he said he'll help facilitate the resurrection process. Where are the village keepers now? I'm not sure. That's one. Huh? One what? One strike. Strike. Yep. You get a total of three. Then, you die by my hand. Sino's looking for any excuse, dude. He seems a little unhinged. Wait, I'm telling the truth. We don't know anything. It was all him. He got us to lure them out of their houses in the night with some kind of incense. We take them to a junction outside the village. Then the mystery guy takes them from there. That was indeed the truth. Mm. Traveler, go on. Do you have any idea who the mysterious person might be? He, um, that guy, he wears a cloak and he's always careful to cover his face. Uh, he calls himself the Scarlet King's envoy. I believe I may know what's going on. Uh-oh. Sino, don't do it! <laughs> Smooth. Damn, what the fuck? Would you just freaking one-shot all three of them? Okay, speak. He's like, okay, they're dead. Go on. If my suspicions are correct, this mystery man they speak of could be from the Academia. Well, Hatham's also missing, so... Some time ago, people from the Academia attempted to take the Village Keepers away. I refused, insisting that they are part of our community. It strikes me now that this secretive character mm. shares the same goal they had. Which means it's highly likely that the Academia was purposely spreading a false rumor to trick the Radicals into delivering the Village Keepers right into their hands. What the fuck do these people do other than scheme? Our top priority now is locating the village keepers. You're right. Isak is still waiting for news on his grandpa. Time to go. Let's leave the village and try to track them down. Let's meet back here once everyone's ready. All right. Oh, speak Let's of the devil. Us and then we'll... Woo! Hello, sir. Where did you come from? Well, as you can see, I am merely sitting here and reviewing what we have deduced thus far. Well, what book are you reading there, sir? It's like, I found this really interesting book talking about the sun and moon. Very interesting stuff. You plan to leave Aru Village and keep searching for the truth of this matter, yes? Yep. We're not going to find out anything more by staying here. Yeah. So we thought that we might as well take the search elsewhere. All Haytham, you haven't helped us out at all ever since we arrived at Aru Village. Bold of you to question our choices. That is true. Yeah, you're all talk! While you were investigating, I had my own work to do, which I've now finished. Really? Paimon doesn't believe you. He's like, well, I don't care what you think, you're dumb. To be honest, we aren't really a team, so I have no obligation to inform you of my whereabouts. Sheesh! Not to mention that going separate ways allowed me to find some important information that you all had missed. I'm going to take you to someone. But, before that, you need to understand where she's coming from. What does that 
mean? How do you think the residents of Aru Village feel about what we're doing? They're probably like, uh, you need to mind your business. In other words, do you truly believe every single word the villagers tell us? Remember what Gandis said? Most people in Aru Village don't necessarily care which deity is in charge of Sumeru. That's because whether the Scarlet King or the Dendro Archon has power is of little significance to them. By contrast, the perils of their daily lives are ever-present concerns. They won't simply share everything they know with you without good reason. That's why you believed there was no further information to be found in this village. Hmm, so you're saying we can find new information from someone we've already talked to? Among those you have talked to, there's someone who was consciously keeping you out of the loop. In fact, she's been observing your every move since you arrived. Oh, SpaghettiOs. The reason being, to someone who only wants to live their life in peace, any external factors introduce unpredictability into the equation. By getting involved with an outsider, she risks drawing unwanted attention to herself. As for why she might be so wary about all this, <laughs> maybe you should ask her. Cry from the Elazar Hospital? What does Elazar have to do with this now? Holy shit, we're bringing that back. Miss Shawnee, as we discussed earlier, I've brought someone with me. Mr. Alhatham, I'm aware of where you stand, but how can I make sure that your friends think the same as you? Go ahead and talk to her. You'll get the answers you want. Uh, may I call you Traveler? Sure thing. Hi, Miss Shawnee. Uh, hi, Traveler. I want to ask you something. Do you think the resurrection of the Scarlet King can truly change Sumeru for the better? I don't think that's possible because it'll only result in conflict. It's like my God's better than your God. And then the people are just going to have this entire feud and it's going to drive both gods to kill each other. And it's not going to result in anything good. We're all going to be distracted from the real threat, which is the Academia and the Fatui and all this crazy shit and Scaramouche and more work for me to do. And I already have to go looking for my sister and I'm already staying here longer than I want to. And I don't have time for this. So I'm sorry, but no. That's very similar to what Miss Candace says. Yeah. I know you two are friends. Agreed. That's why I'm willing to talk to you, even though I do have some reservations. Traveler, do you believe our lives will get better? Mm, I, that, I can't promise that. Uh, exactly! I'm like, yo, that's a big ask! <laughs> I can't promise anything, but I'll do the best I can. Yeah! We came here from another nation, so it isn't wrong of you to be weary. And we aren't really residents of any one nation. Yeah, we're residents of a, another planet. But even so, We've met lots of people from different places, and we've always fought for what we believed in. Yeah. We have friends in Sumeru, and we want to help them. That's why we decided to stay here for a while. I want to trust you. My apologies for posing my questions like that. But to be honest, I didn't expect you to come back for more information. The village keepers who had helped me disappeared with no explanation, and I didn't dare breathe a word about it to anyone. Until now. You can tell them. Mm. I'm sure he'll keep your secret. All right. I'll tell you what I told Al Haytham. I actually have a sharper sense of hearing than most. Sometimes, oh. I hear strange crying sounds in the night. Okay. That's a little, that's a little weird. <laughs> there are ghosts? Perhaps. I'm not sure. A little scared it's chat. It's faint, but it's definitely the sound of crying. It comes from far away in the distance and always carries very raw emotion. Could you make out the, where the sound is coming from? There's really nothing around these parts, except for an old hospital not far from the village. A hospital? And the quest mentioned something about Elazar? I think they used to use it for treating Elazar, but it's been abandoned for years. Oh dear, we need to check out that hospital. Yeah, let's go! I'm pretty sure Kali was in a, a hospital similar to that, like, in the snippets of the manga, we saw her in like a Sumeru style like environment. She might have been treated for Elazar before she got shipped to the Fatui. We are going to Dar al Shifa. At this waypoint. Oh, there's a bunch of people here. Okay. Oh, lifeless Dar al Shifa. Monsters, watch out! All right, don't worry, I got this. Spring forth! Everybody stand back! Let's nowhere to run! Oh, hello, sir. Flex up. Observe. Germinate. Uh -huh. I'm going in. Your friends can help. 
judgment is upon you. Your penance is due. There we go. Sheesh. They were easier to deal with than Paimon had expected. What were you expecting? Uh, super strong bandits? Or monsters taller than buildings dropping out of the sky? Or, you know, something like that. Yeah, sounds logical. Hmm. This is the one. Let's go. Thank you, sir. There it is. All right, who's ready to play doctor? Oh my god, doctor? Dotore? This fucking uh, hospital? Let's go in and take a look. Oh my god. Yo, if this has to do with Dotore, I'm gonna be fucking... I'm gonna be tripping balls. Pause every... Stop everything. Uh, hey. Oh, hey, Dom. We haven't found Squat. Are you sure we aren't wasting our time here? Patience. Shawnee says she only hears the crying at night. We have time to burn. I love how he says that, and then I look over, and there are two explosive barrels right next to us. I'm taking a break. W what? <sighs> and just like that, he sits down. Wait, he even brought a book to read? Yo, what kind of book is that you're reading? Hmm. Huh? Uh, um, uh, uh, the natural position. Here we go. Which is the positional propensity of an entity in natural motion? In contrast with an object in forced motion? Huh? When free from external influences, every entity displays the tendency to follow its natural trajectory? Paimon would be an awesome physics major, just saying. Oh, Paimon gives up. You keep reading your book. See ya. <laughs> uh, nighttime? Hello? <gasps> Paimon's getting so sleepy. Wait. Oh, I hear the crying too. What was that sound? It's a little freaky. There it is. Is the sound coming from here? Huh. Paimon's not seeing anything. Oh my god. It's from below. But there's no way we can get down there. Something is off about the interior here. Hmm. Uh, of course. Uh, what the fuck is this? Blowing mushrooms underground? Mm, as I thought, there's a hidden structure. What the hell is all this shit? It's like they tucked another hospital into this one. Oh, so this is like, the upstairs one is just like a front, and then like any Elazar patients come under here and they probably do like some fucked up experiments with them. Oh, it looks like there are other mechanisms around here. Let's keep exploring. Investigate the elemental monument around the hospital. Okay. Oh, there's one right here. So I'm assuming this Dendroculus is underground. Oh no, it's right there. Pog. Let's grab this. Oh. oh. Please don't tell me Bennett died. Okay, thank fucking God. Holy shit, I thought Bennett was a goner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the sun on the wall over here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Someone like carved out maybe one for each day. You're not supposed to be in here yet. Oh, okay. I'll I'll fast travel here and then I'll walk back. I'm too much of a gamer. I'm failing from success, ladies and gentlemen. Spring for observe. Teamwork is strength. Stick up. Your sins weigh upon your soul. Guilty. <laughs> Adam! Propagate! One down, two to go. Scatter! Ha! Surrender! Oh my god. Propagate! Last one's right here. Easy clap, boys. Ooh! A key stolen by a masked weasel. If there is a key, there must be a lock that matches it. But what would an abandoned hospital still have to hide? Ancient key. Okay, I gotta keep my eyes peeled for a key. Right, hopefully I find the weasel down here somewhere. Yeah, look at this place, bro. What the fuck? Oh shit. Emergency notice? Okay, hold on. This week's meals. Oh, there's a lot of like lore stuff over here. This week's shift. Oh, there's a, there's a lot of stuff over here. Hold on. Look. There's someone over there. Uh, we need to be careful. Good idea. Let's approach him slowly without alarming him. Yeah, who is this? This is like a, a student? <sighs> that doesn't sound good. He can't speak, and his eyes are unfocused. But he looks too young to be anyone's grandfather. 
Also, why is he the only one here? Didn't expect to see him here. All right, so you know him. You know him? He's Razak, a senior of mine at the Academia. He's a scholar too? Is he the kind that holds up in a forest and mumbles stuff about training? No. And that's the problem. Razak was never involved in any of those things. He never trained in the forest, let alone reach Satyavada life. So how did he become like this? Leaving that question aside for the moment, him being here alone means that we might be too late. Looks like they've already taken everyone away. Mm. For whatever reason, they left Razak here. Perhaps they simply didn't have time to come back for him. Hmm. Oh, that's not good. There are drag marks on the ground. They're clearer by the doorway. Someone was forcefully drawing a cart that was loaded with something heavy. Loaded with people? People? That is one possibility. Hmm. It looks like they were in a hurry, as if they were afraid of being caught. In their haste, they failed to notice Razak hiding in a corner. Are they like doing like Elazar experiments on people? The symptoms are identical. Looks like we found living proof. Allow me to jog your memory. Recall your time at Port Ormos. Don't you think his symptoms look familiar? Is it similar to the guy who had like the divine knowledge? Was he fed divine knowledge and it went bad? <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. The Eremite guy who went mad. Oh, now that you mention it, they're acting the same way. Correct. The Academia is behind all of this. Bro, fuck the Academia, dude. We need to, like, overthrow that government <laughs> ASAP. First, the Academia spread a false rumor of the Scarlet King's resurrection, emphasizing the role of the village keepers, the mad scholars who were exiled to Aru Village. Gets a bunch of people together. These rumors were all the persuasion that the radicals needed, and those based in Aru Village leapt into action. Yeah. Unbeknownst to them, of course. Through rounding up the scholars, they were actually helping the academia, as well as being able to exploit the radicals for their own ends. This scheme has one further advantage to the academia. All the risks and responsibilities are offloaded onto the Scarlet King's followers. Yeah, so the academia doesn't get in trouble. Life for the desert dwellers has been brutal ever since the Scarlet King's death all those years ago. Beneath the surface, Feelings of desperation are widespread. Many would give everything they have for the prospect of something better. Anyone looking to exploit that for their own ends simply needs to make a few empty promises. Yeah, so the academia is like, hey, if you do this for us, we'll help you bring your god back. And in reality, it's like, uh, we're just going to get what we need from you and then leave you guys to deal with the aftermath. Even if complications arise, people will see that those involved are all followers of the Scarlet King and look for no further explanation than differences of belief. Mm. A deep-seated mistrust of the desert and everyone in it by the rest of Sumeru will make sure of that. I actually really like where this Archon quest is going, because, like, this kind of just shows you how terrible humans can be to each other. This is what happens when you have no gods. You know what I mean? This is life, essential. Well, I wouldn't say this is life. This is like a hyperbolic version. Like, this is way worse. The notion of an academia plot wouldn't even cross their minds. It may seem like a simple strategy, but it is able to work wonders under Sumeru's current circumstances. Yeah, no, no gods. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. It's in line with the village chief's theory too. But there's still one very important question. Wasn't it the academia that brought the scholars to Aru village in the first place? Mm. Why does it want them back now? So first off, they like reject these people. These people are like rejects. So they get sent to Aru village as exiles and then they go mad. And then like through going mad, they have some type of knowledge within them. And then maybe the academia will then try to siphon that. Throughout this process, one thing has changed. The scholars identity. First, they were scholars. Then, they became lunatics. Oh, okay. After that, I got it. They were exiles. I got it switched. And finally, I got it switched up. They become missing persons. I said they were scholars, exiles, then lunatics. It's scholars, lunatics, then exiles, and then they go missing. An exile is still patently a living, breathing human being. But when someone becomes a missing person, mm. that is brought into question. If you can't find someone, you have no way of knowing what exactly happened to them. Yeah. 
that makes missing people an ideal resource. One possibility is that the information in their brains could be extracted into knowledge capsules. Yes, that's what I was getting at. I was like, they round them up, they chuck them into the desert, they fucking round them up once they're all like lunatics, and then they harvest their, their knowledge. Extracted? You mean canned knowledge comes from people's brains? Oh my god. What the fuck? With the technology of the Sumeru Academia, it's entirely possible. Dude, did you see how many knowledge capsules Dory had? And I guess the red ones are like real, like forbidden knowledge. Forbidden knowledge. Perhaps the process caused them great suffering, which is why they cry out in the dead of night mm. when no one is watching them. Judging by Razak's state, the contents of a divine knowledge capsule were extracted from his mind. But something went wrong in the process. But then, like, what do they do with this divine knowledge capsule? Like, what do they just want the knowledge without the process of having to, like, lose their minds to get it? So they're basically like, oh, let's let's have these uh, these sheep basically in our place, essentially. Or perhaps his curiosity got the better of him and he used such a capsule for himself. Yeah. Uh, Paimon's a little confused. Can they just use anyone's brain? No, that can't be right. Most of the mad scholars had made contact with the divine consciousness in the forest. That's what the academia is after. It's also safe to assume that this knowledge is something to do with the Fatui, the doctor, and also the balladeer. They're using divine knowledge capsule to turn the balladeer into a god. The look on your face tells me you've realized the answer. The academia needs people who have been exposed to the divine consciousness, yes. That's right. To some scholars, gaining knowledge about the gods is their entire life's pursuit. Mm. Extracting can knowledge is just one of the extreme measures they turn to. However, I can't help but wonder, what do they seek to gain from divine knowledge? Bro, this is literally what I was talking about, like, before we even came to Sumeru. I was like, bro, like, every nation has, like, countermeasures to keep these people, like, safe for their own good. A is like, oh, eternity. Nothing will ever change. Nothing will be different. We'll never get targeted. Zhang Li's like, yo, I'll keep my people busy through commerce. They'll never go snooping. Mondstadt, Venti's like, yo, just get drunk and become, like, <laughs> blissfully ignorant. But Sumeru's like, yo, we need knowledge. We gotta keep searching, keep Keep digging and they're gonna dig in too deep they're gonna find that forbidden knowledge and they're gonna have a, a nail with their name on it the academia is going out of their way to look for forbidden knowledge but what is their ultimate goal extracting information from people as if they were lifeless objects <laughs> if this is the direction of academic progress yeah then the academia may as well shut its doors the divine knowledge capsule is something i want to investigate in full that doesn't mean I'm willing to take action for the sake of a few strangers. Though he rejects the notion of greater moral responsibility, he justifies his actions because they are true to his personal motivations. Someone like him might actually make for a gr a better ally. Hmm. Might have to save a couple bucks for this guy down the road. Hyman's been wanting to say this for a while. There are a lot of bad guys in the academia, but you're not one of them. You're their weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably right. Uniqueness is also an asset, is it not? What do we do about this guy? Yeah. He won't last long if we leave him here. Let's take him with us. All right. We'll work out our next step after we return to Aru Village. All righty. God damn, dude. Academia, it ain't looking good for you. Oh, what the hell is this? Oh, we found... Oh, the weasel! Oh, I just saw the weasel freaking skedaddle out of here. Yo, let's go! Um, all right. So there's a lot of stuff over here to read. All right, we're going to start all the way over here and we're gonna work our way down so this week's meals keep a balanced diet rest regularly and maintain a good mood monday why are they eating mint i would literally hate living in a hospital like this minty bean soup tachin lunch curry shrimp and then for dinner, Pani Buri. Some questionable decisions for some of those meals, I will admit. Emergency notice. Okay, I gotta write this shit down. Patient Abbas, male, 23 years old, mole on left side of forehead and left-handed. While his condition remains very serious, survival will be difficult without professional medical care. That's patient survivability. Once found, immediately inform. Don't give up. Stay positive. All beings are under the watchful eye of the divine, so don't ever give up. 
rest of the document has been rendered unreadable by weathering. Okay, so we have a patient that is in seemingly critical condition. In case of emergency, contact the physician, the physician on duty immediately. Ibrahim, Tuesday, redacted. Oh my God. Wednesday, a Maudi. I swear I've seen this name before. I've seen a Maudi before. The remaining sections are blank. I'm gonna say Tuesday might be Zandik. I'm just gonna put Zandik in parentheses here. Something just tells me we've we've gotten enough text from Zandik in the region thus far to be like, hmm. Old vase. It seems to be darkened remains of a stem inside the vase. This is probably used to hold flowers. The words for Avon are at the bottom of the bottle. It seems to have been a gift to someone named Avon. Dusty tableware. There is a name inscribed on the bowl, Hakim. There's a couple more things over here. Blackened sugar bowl. If there weren't crooked carvings of Arbaz, Abbas, and sugar jar on them, it would be difficult to imagine that this dirty clay jar was ever used to store sugar. All right, and now we have another dusty tableware. There's a name in, oh, this is Avon. This is like Avon's like bed or something. This is his area. There's that last room. The room upstairs has that locked cupboard. Oh, let's go and see what that's all about. Hmm, Paimon wonders what sort of treasure we'll find here. The shelves are full of thin books. You browse through them and find that they seem to be medical documents. I'm oh, sorry, hospital documents such as medical report records and financial statements. You shut the door in disappointment. Paimon thought there would be some special treasure inside. Even the wooden barrels and crates we found on our adventures are better than this. At least those have cabbages or fowl inside. Eh? What's this? It seems like it fell out from over there. Let Paimon see. Maybe this leads us to treasure. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, shit. Oh, my God, it's the patient again. Hold up. Patient name, Abbas. Gender, male. Occupation, farmer. Basic status of admission. Scabby skin at limb extremities. Multiple ulcers on the back, chest, and other bodily surfaces. Weakness of limbs and poor mobility observed. Mental faculties are coherent, though there are so there are clear signs of fatigue, poor sleep quality, and poor appetite. Doctor in charge, a Maori. That seems to be symptoms of Elazar, the scabby skin, weakness, poor mobility. So yeah, he seems to be an Elazar patient. Week one of hospitalization, new scabs at limb extremities and enlarged ulcers. The left arm seems unusable and is in pain. That sucks because he's left-handed. Uh, mental faculties are coherent, though there are clear signs of fatigue. Okay, so this is all the same. Poor appetite. Doctor in charge, a Maori. Week three of hospitalization, the scabs are scale-like and have spread across the surface surface of the body. There is necrosis in multiple ulcers. The patient has fallen into a coma. Doctor in charge, a Maori. Week nine of hospitalization. The necrosis in the ulcers have been effectively kept under control? No way. The necrosis in the ulcers have been effectively kept under control and no new scabs have appeared on the surface of the body. The patient is in a comatose state. Doctor in charge, not a Maori. Redacted. Who was it that was looking after Kali's Elazar that kept it under control the whole time she was with them? It was Dotore. They're blocking out the name because it must be Dotore's real name. And if we've heard of the name Zandik in the rainforest, but they're hiding the name now, I think it's because it's both the same name. So I'm gonna say the doctor in charge was Zandik. Week 15, the wounds from the replacement treatment have not healed, not even for a long time. No new scabs have appeared on the surface of the body. There is weakness in the limbs and the patient cannot grasp items on their own. The patient is also experiencing fever and vomiting. Mental faculties are coherent, though fatigued, poor sleep, and unable to eat now. Doctor in charge, redacted. Week 21 of hospitalization. We have started to manage to keep the scabs on the body surface under control and the new limbs functions have been restored. Wait, the new new limbs functions? Patient is experiencing chronic coughing and is prone to fainting. Mental faculties are coherent and is in a good state. Sleep quality and appetite are decent. Hurrah. Holy shit. Wait, did they replace this man's limbs with segments? Dotori knows a thing or two about segments. Prosthetics. Uh, Elazar is so scary. Hmm, what does the other document say? Oh my god. Pure bliss right now. Holy shit! There's so much. 
Holy fuck, there's so much. Treatment subject, abbess, gender, male, occupation, farmer, doctor in charge, redacted. Status, after 20 weeks of treatment, specimen fours, new skin, and new left arm have recovered well. No changes in appetite or sleep. Mental state fluctuates beyond the normal range. There has been multiple attempts to leave the care area. God's voice guides me, is cited as motivation, and the specimen is believed to have delusional tendencies. Additionally, the God's voice described in the confession is probably related to the resonant quake phenomenon present in the internal topographic structures of the dunes. This should be investigated to rule out ungovernable input interferences. Increase supervision. Treatment protocol. The second phase of the blank trial is beginning to see results. The next phase, blank. Objective, specimen four's organs. Following extensive examination, sample three is the best material for the third phase of the blank trial. Okay, so there's a lot of, so there's specimen one, specimen two, I'm assuming, specimen three, specimen four. Yee! Yeah, we went from patients to specimens, so this is like experimental stuff going on now. Before the implementation of blank, blank is required. Continuous vomiting and skin blank is a normal occurrence. Blank must be prepared beforehand for specimen four to maintain the circulation of blank. I hate all of these redactions. This is actually kind of annoying. After completion of the basic blank operation, observe the subject for one week. If normal psychological activities are observed in the organs, the rate of deterioration of surface scabs is reduced. The limb function is restored. The next phase of the blank trial can commence. We'll go on with this trial. If things get worse, let's stop. If things get better, we'll proceed. Physician's notes. All specimens have one thing in common. Body elemental quantities are at abnormally higher levels and are positively correlated to the severity of the disease. After the blank experiment, body elemental quantities are reduced and samples self-reported a reduction in symptoms. It is reasonable to hypothesize that there is a casual relationship between elemental elemental quantities and Elazar. More controlled trials should be conducted to exclude redundant variables. Note, the enrichment process of elemental quantities in humans may be dynamically sustained. After the completion of early blank experiments within a short period of time, specimen 1's physical indicators trended to the norm. In later stages, due to blank not being complete, the quantities of elements in the sample bodies rebounded. The symptoms increased, leading to specimen 1 blank could not be recycled for materials. That means specimen one's death? Could not be recycled for materials. Like, they're literally tools, bro. Information obtained. Preparations must be made for long-term trials. Blank cannot be stopped before the specimen symptoms have stabilized. Due to the nature of the trial, there must be a method to stabilize the sample's mood. Removal of blank may be attempted. Following the new method, the material rejection rate has been significantly reduced. Specimen two and three developed mental instability due to associative connections to fundamental internal qu inner qualities of blank and tend to attribute the disease to unverifiable divine punishment, consequently considered it blasphemy to accept blank as treatment. It is a very interesting thought. Exploring neurostimulation and the resulting cognitive shift could be a future research topic. Due to the above uncontrollable variables, they halted at stage two, a shame. However, the materials provided by those two samples were the best quality materials so far. It is reasonable to believe that the perfect performance of specimen four is related to the qual material quality provided by those two samples. So specimen one was not salvageable. Experiment two and three were salvageable and the materials harvested from those two experiments went on to create a perfect performance result in an experiment four. Ultimately, once the three stage experiment was completed, Specimen 4's symptoms disappeared completely, proving that it is possible to use blank to control the elemental contents of a person's body without relying on elemental power. There is potential for weaponization. Discussion of research on blank have to be increased in the future. Humans have unlimited potential. It may be foolish for me as a researcher to write this, but with enough input, I might be able to reach the level of a god, or so people call.
call it. So this is definitely Dotore number one. No fucking cap. Did he just cure Elazar? Once the third stage is completed, the experiment symptoms disappeared completely. So I don't know if this is Elazar or if this might be either Elazar or Vision, uh, uh, Delusions. And they added something to get rid of it. Oh, I just realized. Didn't they inject Kali with a deceased god's uh, Tataragami essence? So that's basically what this is. They're inserting Archon residue into the subjects and then it seems to stabilize them. I just remembered that's what they did to Kali in the manga. Yeah, that's why I hear God's voice guides me. Whatever essence of the god they inject into the patient. Holy fuck, dude, this is huge. Yeah, this is incredible stuff. I wish these redactions weren't here just so I can make better sense of what exact, because there's some long redactions here that I'm just like, what does, what's that long ass line say? That's quite big. Impressive. Paimon, do of course you don't. <laughs> Paimon doesn't understand a thing. Ignorance might be bliss here, to be honest. I don't get it either. Damn, I'm, I'm smarter than both of them. Paimon only understands the part that goes, God's voice guides me. Does that mean that there's unique voices guiding us here? It could be underground water flow or creature activity. Yeah, who knows? There might be some underground ruins. Let's listen to any sounds and take a closer look when we hear something. Okay, before my time. People don't want to mention his name, nor do they want to remember his words or deeds. Damn, bro. Anyways, this was incredibly fascinating. All right, chat. Am I allowed to go down into that hole yet? Or is that something that I have to go to later? Oh, I can now. Yo, poggers, let's go. Geronimo. Okay, what the hell is down here? Oh, I'll tell you what's down here. More scarabs. Let's go. Holy shit. What the fuck? What the hell's going on here? Y'all got your own little clubhouse? Strike is one. So yeah. Through me, justice is served. Oh my god! Holy shit, dude. Third time's a charm. What's that on the wall? Hold on. Yeah, so there's some markings over here. Read. Unknown person's etching. I can hear them all. The vicious winds of the desert. Avon's angry weeping for Hakim. The word of God. I can always hear them. All of them. First Hakim, then Avon, then Arbas. They all left dissolving into the yellow sand, leaving me here just to suffer. But my broken mind and body can bear no more. I wonder if this is Abbas or Abbas. Oh God, protector of all the desert people, mightier than the sandstorm, is more glorious than the sun. I beg you, please put an end to this trial. Free me, I beg you, from the scalpel of Free me, I beg you, from the scalpel of the wicked doctor. From the potions that make me hurt all over. Let me return to the fields of my home. I beg you, please. So it's Dotori. <laughs> it's literally the wicked doctor. Did he escape? Because they said that they had to, like, monitor him. So he, like, busted out of this joint, dug himself underground over here, and now he's leaving, like, little notes for himself as he escapes. Hello? Damn, bro, I'm literally moving in on this people on these freaking hilly churls. Spring forth! Scatter! <laughs> Everybody stand! Surrender! <laughs> Get him! Alright, there's another entrance over here. Oh, another I didn't even see this. Hold up. Knock! Abyss! Knock harder. If you knock the right place, you can break these mud walls. Then you will never have to eat grass or lizards again. Unknown person's etchings. Knock, Abbas. Don't be afraid. You can get out. Don't be afraid. You can get out. Don't be afraid. You can get out. So did someone leave notes for Abbas to find when he broke out? Because that one seems like it's his. And that one seems like it's somebody else's. We dig, 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 and we mine all day through. To dig, 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 dig is what we like to do. All right, what is this? Abbas, did you get out? God punished me. I should have died. But now I'm hiding in this hole, living like a lizard. That evil doctor has forgotten me, and so has God. Wait in the pit that was dug, and the end will come, just as he will eventually return with his seven glorious apostles. When that time comes, there will be no more suffering. Hakim and Avon will return to our beloved Aru village, 
and little Arbos will have all the sweets he wants, and I, Dunes, Sumter Beasts, home. Will mom and dad be there waiting for me when the end comes? They are still healthy. They should be in the fields, shouldn't they? I don't want to die. Are you still listening? King of all of the children in the sand. We have been punished with Elazar because we were lazy and wasted the precious fields God gave us. I accept this. Ah, that's depressing. God, if you are still willing to accept this unworthy believer, Abbas, as your own, please show yourself to me. Speak to me once more. I do not want to dissolve into the yellow sands. Not yet. This poor man, he got his Alazar seemingly cured, but like at a painful cost. I don't, I, I hope he made it out alive, you know? Guilty. There we go. Oh shit. Wait, I missed the scripture on the side. God damn it! The hell is that noise? Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Alright, hold on, give me a second. I gotta go back over here. There's something over here. God forgives all. And, uh, there's something over here. What is this? Severely eroded hoe. <laughs> Wording. A farming tool appearing in the wilderness like this is quite the surprise. Other than serious erosion, the handle of the hoe is covered in mud. It seems unusable. Ooh! Escape from the hospital! Yo, man's made it out! There was one survivor that got away. Poggers! He made it, chat! My god, where the hell is he? What happened to him? How long ago was this? Holy fuck, this is huge! This is beautiful, though. Holy fuck. This is the first oasis that I'm seeing in the desert. Oh my god, dude. Look at that. I have no idea what the hell all of that, like, energy is being siphoned into the pyramid. Like, I couldn't even begin to tell you what the fuck that means. But yeah. The other ruined golem! Holy shit! Oh my god, it's actually here? Oh my god, the giant gears! Ara Riken took the gears out of the one in the rainforest. But I think this one was sabotaged by one of the Schwanenritter knights. One of the, I think it was the woman, she, um, it said that she, like, betrayed them by tampering with machinery or something like that. Yeah, this thing is, can I go into this? I don't even know how the hell I'd get up. Oh, okay, I'd probably go on from underneath. Valley of Dari. Wait, what the fuck just happened? Uh, hello? Are you the Eremite that I... Afratu Commission, please stop here if you are not. This area ahead is very dangerous. I'm already commissioned the Eremite from the Cathedral of Regzar to deal with it. Ordinary people should stay back. As the Mahamata, it would be a dereliction of my duty if anything were to happen to you. Did something happen ahead? Something strange is going on. See that huge machine over there? It is said to be a relic of the legendary Dari people. Dari? Perhaps you're more familiar with the name Conria. Wait, what? Dari is an ar archaic name that's commonly used in the Vahamana Darshan. What? So every time we've seen Dari, that's actually Conria, like another word for it. Legend has it that the Conria Schwanenritter once piloted these giant machines to combat the monster, confirmed, combat the monsters from the abyss. Three ruin golems survived the brutal war and were sealed by the sages. Wait, three? I mentioned this before, but rainforest, desert, flower garden. I think we're going to get another location because the rainforest is Ruka Devada's domain. The desert is the Scarlet King's domain. And who do we have left? The goddess of flowers. So if there is another ruin golem, it's going to be there. It has been lying there silently for centuries, but lately it's suddenly become active and has even been attacking nearby people. It indiscriminately attacks all living things in its vicinity with- Oh my god. Bro, I literally almost died. This is the first time we've seen such dangerous capabilities in these sealed ruin golems. There's no way that we can leave them unattended. Damn, chat. Were y'all setting me up for a drive-by? Y'all just were- Y'all were really out here trying to kill your boy. Chaos cores that powered them should have been deactivated ages ago, so it's strange that it can still function even after setting. No, not when they have perpetual energy. Paimon doesn't understand.
kind of thing, but this ruin golem is very similar to the one we saw at Debentaka Mountain, but that big one didn't attack everyone around it. Oh, you know about ruin golems? Then I suppose it saves me the explanation. While they still have an autonomous system, they were mainly operated by people. That's the strangest part. The sages have sealed the path into the ruin golem using Suda's flow, so no one will be able to activate it. Mr. Jazari specializes in ruin golem research. If he were here, he would be dying to go inside and have a look. Oh, you know Jazari? Yes, he has indeed done some research on those machines. I have asked him for his help with the investigation, but he seems to be too busy writing something. Perhaps that's the exact naivete of the Shiriwar. If he had paid more attention to the inner workings of the academia, he wouldn't be stopping at Dostor now. Why don't we help you instead? We helped Mr. Jazari in his investigation too. That is, if you give the Eremites payment to us, right? Really? having people with prior experience would be great but are you adventurers can't let you take such risks if you're ordinary citizens you may have helped in the investigation of a similar machine but this is different this guy's beam cannons are no joke i don't know how i'll face the academia if i'd let you throw your lives away we're registered adventurers i need you to enter the ruin golem and shut down its autonomous system from inside it would be better if you could figure out a reason behind the strange phenomena its autonomous system should be controlled by a switch in its cockpit after turning it off the ruin golem will enter manual operation operation mode. However, the cockpit has been sealed too. You'll need to break the seal after before entering. According to the records, the power of the seal is maintained by the three groups of mechanisms called Suda's flow. Breaking them will unseal the entrance, but be careful not to destroy internal structures. After all, is it an important cultural relic registered at the academia? I'm clearly not going to do this. Right, I'm expecting to die here, by the way. Oh shit. Please it doesn't lock on to me, does it? Oh my god. Bro! Hold on. Flags up. Observe. Yo, get fucked! Holy shit, Yunjin freaking blocked it! Alright, clearly she didn't block that one. <laughs> Alright, I'm leaving, I'm leaving! Okay, all fun and games aside, we learned a lot of information. Let's get back to the Archon quest. Jesus Christ.